него острые уши и униформа ученого, но он такой... Ladies and gentlemen, the Moscow chapter of the Bills Above Philharmonic Choir. Всем привет! Вы смотрите YouTube канал Медиатор. Это канал, посвященный рок-музыке и всему, что с ней связано. С вами Инна и Ольга. Это наш самый-самый первый ролик, и мы надеемся, что у нас не просто лавки, а получилось что-то хорошее. Ну, наконец-таки мы здесь, на YouTube. И герой нашего сегодняшнего выпуска Аурелио Вольтер. Настоящий джентльмен, фолк-музыкант, э, стоп-мошен-аниматор, э, автор многих книжек, комиксов и смелых шуток. Ну, а также еще все-таки то ли был конец, то ли вампир. И еще у него есть канал на YouTube. Да. Как бы там ни было, мы отправились на его концерт в Зилла-арене. Которую устраивала Дельта Миконг. К сожалению, у нас было мало времени, но мы все же успели поболтать с Аурелио и даже посмотреть за кулисы. Cheers. На здоровье! На здоровье! Yes, and then I'm, I'm always corrected. <laughs> yeah, really? I, anytime I ask... Okay, that's a second level of yeah. understanding. Yes, yeah. every time I ask anybody, how do you say cheers in Russian, Russians always say, uh, you say Nazdarovia. But then when I say Nazdarovia, no, no one says that, yes. Okay, so let's start with the questions. Yes. Um, you're a man of many talents. Thank you. You do a lot of different things. Um, and I'm assuming that you started as an animator. I did. And you also most famous probably for music. Or at least, yeah, well, at least. Before I ever made music, yeah. I was making TV commercials for the Super Bowl and MTV station IDs, station, uh, sci-fi channel station IDs. So yes. My work was seen by millions of people. In fact, my animation work has been seen by many more people than have heard my music. But there's no credits on commercials. Yeah. So nobody knew who was making those pieces. Oh, that's really sad. Yeah. <laughs> so now with my, with my uh, you know, tiny little bit of success in music, yeah. uh, it seems much more successful than the animation because People who listen to my music actually know who I am. But that's why I didn't finish my question. Oh, my question please. was that, uh, and I also, I'm, I'm assuming, but maybe not, but I'm assuming that you also spend a lot of time doing uh, the, your YouTube videos because they look like they take a lot of time and effort. So I was wondering... Do you mean the gothic homemaking videos? Yeah. So I was wondering, um, how do you define yourself? How do you... I, what, what's, what is most important for you? How do you think of yourself, who you are? Uh -huh. Well... There is, there is no hierarchy, okay. there's no order in okay. what's important. Um, I love music, but I love animation, and I also love making gothic homemaking. So I, and I'm a workaholic, so I work all of the time. So for instance, last night I performed in St. Petersburg, and then after the concert I went to the hotel and went to sleep, and when I woke up I got on the Sapsam, and I edited the footage for the next Gothic homemaking episode for four hours. And then here I am in Moscow and now I will perform again. And when I'm done here, I will edit more footage for Gothic homemaking. So because I'm working all of the time, I, I don't really have to worry too much about how I split up my time. I can't decide I'm going to edit while I'm performing, yeah, but there's plenty of time. Different. 
There's plenty of time around the show. Do I understand right that you are self-taught? Uh, yes. I have in, never... In all of this? Everything. So, so how is my it humanly possible? Well, I don't know. Uh, my guitar is a few feet away from you. And I know that the top string is called E. And I know that the bottom string is called E. But 20 years of being a professional musician, I still don't know the names of the strings in between. That's really. probably not that important. I mean, no. not to me, but it certainly is very important to most guitarists. Well, so, yeah, it depends on what you play, I guess. Yeah, I just, I learned to play guitar, and I don't really think, to, I mean, when I made my first album, I didn't know the names of the chords I was playing. I just put my fingers places. That sounded good. Well, it means that you're talented in a few fields. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I think idiot savant is maybe a term that could be used. Okay. But animation is the same. I started making animated films in my basement when I was 10 years old. Um, I did, when I was 17, go to the university for a very short time, maybe two months, to learn animation. Oh, okay. And I walked in and my instructors said, oh, no, you already know how to do it. I showed them my films. I said, you already know how to do this. What are you doing here? So now you teach. Yeah, so now I teach at the same place. That's really so cool. It's weird. It's weird. It's very strange. Um, speaking of music, I've watched some of the interviews. I think one of them was quite a couple of years ago. And there you were a few times mentioning that you had a plan to do a Spanish album. Yes, well... What happened? Oh, no, nothing happened. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. But that's probably my next record. Okay, so it's like, still in the plan. I, I was making a record a year for a while. Mm -hmm. And then Heart Shape Wound happened, which was my most recent album. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very emotional album. And it was very difficult. I found it actually very difficult to record it. Because when I would go into the studio, I would remember all of the feelings that caused me to write those songs. And it was painful and uncomfortable and terrible. And so I didn't record them for a long time. And I signed a contract with Project Records. So after three years of, after three years of not making the uh, mm -hmm. album, I finally had no choice. You know, so I, I had to make it. And at that point, I, I forced myself to, uh, to make the album. Okay. And um, about the new album, which, like, yeah, the, the heart, uh, heart shape. Heart shape wound, yeah. yeah. Uh, you also have the, uh, uh, of the front lady of uh, an academy. Oh, yeah, and Arch Enemy. Yeah, Arch Enemy. Yeah. Arch Enemy. Yeah. How, how did this happen? We were both in a project together, a project called American Murder Song, uh, which is the project of this guy, uh, uh, <laughs> Terence Zdenich, is a very interesting last name, yeah. and his partner, Sar Hendelman. And uh, Terence was responsible for Repo the Genetic Opera, so I was so excited when he asked me to be in his project. And it was really kind of like a series of music videos. And when I got there, all of the actors were musicians. So Chibi from The Birthday Massacre was one of the actors, and uh, Curtis from Creature Feature was one of the actors, and then there was this blue-haired girl, and I had no idea who she was. Uh, but she was very friendly, and we got along, and I eventually looked up her band and saw that she was a black metal singer, a death metal singer, and very, very, very popular. And we stayed in touch and we became friends and I just, one day, I was making this heavy metal ballad and I thought, who do I know that sings heavy metal? I was like, just, So you just oh. have like a death metal, like a, a melody, death metal melody? Yeah, but I, I'm gonna be very honest about something. I had seen photos, so I saw that she was in a death metal band, but I never heard her voice. So when I asked her to be on the record, I didn't know that she growled. Oh, okay. I thought she sang, I don't know, yeah. like in a melodic yeah. way. And so, after I asked her, I thought, oh my God, is she going to growl? Like, I don't, this is a love song. I don't know how it's going to sound if I'm like, oh, now it seems you and me. Like, they're yeah. going to think I'm the girl, right? So, um, but she's an incredible singer and it has an incredible range. And what she sent back was so spectacular. It really made the album. You, you recorded it in different cities. In different cities, yeah. yeah. She recorded it in Canada where she lives. And it made the album a much better album. 
It's really incredible. And, and, and many people email me and say that, that that is their favorite song on the album. That's amazing. Yeah, I also liked it very much. I was like very, very impressed. Um, also wanted to ask you, because uh, you, you do a lot of uh, songs uh, related to Star Trek. Yes. So, like, uh, and there are a lot of spoke going on. There's a lot of Spock going, going on. on. Yeah. yeah. So like, is it like a favorite character or just easy uh, to cosplay? Or no, like... Spock is certainly one of my favorite characters. I don't exactly cosplay because I do cosplay. I'm not going to lie. I'm I fi- one. 51 is not too old for cosplaying, is it? Uh, but I do cosplay. I don't really do Spock, but I do a character I invented called Captain Scock. Oh, okay. And it's Captain Kirk and Spock. And one, they one get mixed. Thing, yeah. They get in the transporter during an ion storm, and they come out as one person named Captain Scock. Okay, that sounds amazing. And so he kind of he has got the pointy ears, mm-hmm. and he wears the science uniform, but he's got the swagger. Kirk. By the way, is the pointy ears stand for Vulcans or for elves or so for all of it? Vampires. Devils, vampires, elves. Oh, yeah, all of it. I've always loved. I think I was before I, you know, I, my ears are surgically pointed. I yeah. don't know if you know that, but before that happened, I was counting how many album covers I was wearing like fake pointy ears, and I think it's like four or five. And then one day I just the, the technology suddenly existed to do it, so I, I was first in line. So the last question to yes. wrap it all up: uh, How do you um, how do you perceive how you Because you you call yourself goth and you you talk uh, I, about goth I am a goth. lot, yeah. Yeah, the, so how, the music isn't goth. Yeah, of course. But, but I am. Yeah, but like uh, as a personality, like as, as someone who says that you belong to the subculture, like how how does it change with like from uh, like a, a puberty from a teenage years to to adulthood? Like how is there is there like a difference of of understanding this? I don't think so. No. I mean. No, I don't think so. Uh, I love all of the same things that I loved in 1984 when I was 17. And when I fell into the goth scene, you know, it really appealed to me visually, aesthetically, and I loved the music. And I actually never got a tattoo because I thought, I'm going to get a tattoo of a bat. And 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I'm going to think it's stupid and I'm going to hate it. But I should have done it because I love I all time. I love all of the same things that I loved when I was a teenager. But I know that David Bowie, for example, said um, a lot uh, that uh, his whole practice is like consistent of like masks, and that he has a lot to do with theatricality. Uh-huh. So is that for you something that you kind of that's how you see the like creative process for like I mean he always said that he is kind of expressing himself through uh, through dressing up and through expressing himself through other kind of uh, through the different masks. It's a little different for me. Yeah. It's a little different for me. Da- David Bowie created characters, and David Bowie yeah. he is a god. Okay, let's just get that straight. He's one of my biggest idols, and he's a god. Um, David played Bowie karaoke here, by the way. Oh, yeah? And our children went to school together, actually. But um, I think it was different for David Bowie. I think David Bowie created characters and then played those characters. Yeah. Uh, as, as my aesthetics change from album to album, that's me. That's... That's you. So you kind of open up your If heart. I'm making a pirate album and I'm dressing up like a pirate on stage, I'm probably dressing up like a pirate when I go to a nightclub. Yeah, that's just, it's an extension of my own personality. They're really not, they're not costumes, okay. really. Thank you very much for that. Um, my pleasure. Yeah, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Very nice uh, chatting. Very nice, thank you. Вообще, для тех, кто не был на концертах Аурелио прежде, стоит сказать, что он рассказывает очень много разных смешных и интересных историй во время своего выступления. Мы подготовили небольшой репортаж о том, как это было. Лично у меня было ощущение, что я попала на какой-то музыкальный стендап, и это было прикольно. Don't need to be beat.
mistakes and now you're starting to understand how this works I drink if I make a mistake I drink if I don't make a mistake and when the bottle is finished then I will make all sorts of different kinds of mistakes I asked this question last night in St. Petersburg and the results were shocking, shocking. So I'm going to ask you tonight, raise your hand because last, yesterday was International Women's Day and I asked a very, very sincere, serious question. I want you to raise your hand if you feel women and men are equal. scaring me okay okay once again once again most of in, in st. Petersburg three people put their hands up and it was all the same guy he had a one really weird long hand with no fingers it was disgusting no that's the point you see it's a penis joke my friend <laughs> Okay, okay. All right, all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We have a different opinion in America. In America, we believe women are equal to men. <laughs> Except when you take them to dinner and then they don't want to pay. But every other thing, every other thing, <laughs> equal to men. Right. It's okay. It's not a matter if it isn't gray. And if at first they think it's strange, they won't think twice if they don't have a brain. with power. I feel like Donald Trump. This is the most smiling I've seen in Russia. I just want you to know. You know, you know that's true, right? Like in, in America, we have a perception that Russians don't smile. And a Russian friend of mine told me, I said, why don't Russians smile? Now you have to understand something, in America, the Russian people I meet are the people at the Russian visa office. <laughs> they are not happy people. They are not, I, I, they get like a ration of one potato a day. They're not happy people. <laughs> I said, why don't Russians smile? She said, if you, if you smile to a Russian, they look at you and say, what is wrong with this person? Are they stupid? Why are they smiling? So I'm so glad to be here with so many... Shut the fuck up. That's what I was trying to say. What the fuck was I talking about? 
This is the last song. I worked very hard on this. This is my fourth time playing in Russia. My fourth time. I was like, this time I'm going to end the song. I'm going to end the concert with a traditional Russian song. Yeah, really, actually. Yeah, dude, I fucking worked on this. Don't piss all over my parade. Here we go. You all know this song, beautiful, most loved Russian anthem. Tra la 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 <laughs> That's not the last song of the night. This is the last song of the night. When the devil is too busy, that's a bit too much. They call on me by name, you see, for my special touch. <laughs> to the gentleman I'm misfortune. I don't know what that means. To the ladies, I'm surprised. It's quite small. But call on me by any name. Anyway, it's all the same. I'm sorry, VIP people, but we're going to invade the VIP area. Oh my god, it's going to be like October, a hundred years ago. You're going... Yes, that was a Russian Revolution joke. Okay, you're going you're gonna to go to the back of the room. You're gonna find the entrance to the VIP area. Oh, see, see Oleg wa waving his hand. See, see the nice, handsome guy who looks like, what if George Michael lived? There he is. That was a fucked up joke. <laughs> wow, and, and please, come as you are. If you drink my rum, you're fired. Spread out, spread out. There's lots of room. There's lots of room. Spread out. Just pretend you're annexing another country near you. It's also a Russian joke. Oh, there's many more people coming. I thought there was coke in there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Moscow chapter of the Beelzebub Philharmonic Choir! <laughs> I'm the fly in your suit. I'm the pebble in your shoe. I'm the pee beneath your bed. I'm a pump on every head. I'm the peel on which you slip. I'm a pin in every head. I'm the thorn side makes you wriggle and ride. What? I'm evil. The devil tips his hat to me. I'm evil. I do it all for free. Your tears are all the pay I'll ever need. While there's children to make sad, while there's candy to be had, while there's pockets left to pick, while there's grannies left to trip down the stairs, I will be there. I'll be waiting round the corner. It's a game, I'm glad I'm in it, cause there's one born every minute. Why? I'm evil. The devil tips his hat to me. Your tears are all the pay of the birdie. Spasiba! Spasiba! Feels about Phil Hamm.
Спасибо, что были с нами. Подписывайтесь на наш канал. Ровно через неделю мы вернемся с новым видео. Ну а для тех, кто хочет больше узнать про Аурелио Вольтера, в подписи есть ссылка на его собственный YouTube канал с его видюшечками. А, а также ищите нас в социальных сетях, выберите какую-нибудь, которая вам больше подходит. И пока! Пока! Дурак, забыла взять с собой э, ноутбук. Нет, это я его забыла взять, это я его забыла взять. Ну, ты не понял, мы просто решили, что как комедия категории Б американских, мы каждый решили, что другой возьмет ноутбук, и в итоге его не взял никто. И это еще при условии, что мы ничего не раскокаем. О, боженьки. А мы ничего не раскокаем. Very hot. Непроверенная информация. Но ведь, а как же домогательство? Чьи? К кому? Кто? Где? Нет, никаких.